Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hello, everyone. I hope uh, all is well in your hearts. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. Um, You know, the Lord really, he's calling to us all, and it's so obvious. Um, I live here in Michigan, and there's a lot happening uh, surrounding the, this virus. It's actually uh, one of the higher infected states in in the United States um, and um, we're hearing rumors of the governor shutting down liquor stores so there's just so many different things happening and you know there's a lot of anxiety there's a lot of depression saints um, there's a lot of you know um, just people who really don't know what to do because they're kind of having to kind of face their own hearts and face themselves. And um, I, I want to pray first. <laughs> um, Lord Jesus, I, I don't know what you're doing, Lord. Only you know, Lord Jesus. And I just, I thank you for being that ever-present source of hope and love, and light, and joy, and peace, and I ask that you invade the hearts of anyone who may see this video, Lord, uh, invade their heart, Lord Jesus, that you would use me to speak whatever it is that you want to say, Lord Jesus, and I thank you, Jesus, in your name, amen. Thank you, Jesus, yes, um, so the Lord showed me Proverbs 21, too. And it says, very short and sweet. <laughs> Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the hearts. And so, you know, the Lord is, he is, he's calling out to us all to, to be closer to him, no matter where we are in our walk. Um, whether we, you know, no matter what, whether we're lost, whether we're, we're saved, He's calling out to all of us, and uh, it's up to us to hear his voice. It's up to us to listen to him. It's up to us to be still with God, right? He, um, for many people right now, it's, it's, a, it's a time of heartache, anxiety, fear, worry, and um I believe it's a time where the true remnant of God can rise up and shine their light, um, be that beacon of hope, be the hands and feet of Jesus, um, and just show something different than maybe religion, okay? Religion wants to beat things into people's head, okay? Religion wants to prove their point. Okay, religion wants to be correct. Okay, and I believe that there's a set of people that, um, there's a few sets of people right now in the church and outside the church. So there's kind of a, you know, yes, Lord. So the Lord has taken me to 1 Samuel 16, 7. And I, I'm just listening to the Spirit. Now, this is at a time when the Lord wanted to rise up David as king and take out Saul as king. And he says in 1 Samuel 16, 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And so I think that, you know, God has shut everything down. God has, he has, you know, he's in control, you know, um, no matter where our opinions may stand as far as, you know, the government and, you know, what, wherever God is in control of it all. Okay. Um, hi, Kim Yada. 
I love you, sis. He's in full control. And so I believe that, you know, he shut down all of our churches for us to be closer to him, right? But he also is kind of anointing a new king, so be it, you know, because many, many leaders, maybe they don't realize their platform is their idol. You know, many, um, many don't know what to do without their platform, right? They don't know what to do without being in that spotlight. And, and, um, you know, God forbid we think that, that Jesus needs any of us. He, he doesn't, he can call on 10,000s of angels to get his work done. And so this is a time where he's really, he's, he's kind of opening our hearts up to ourselves, right? But he's also, um, he's exposing our hearts to everyone else, you know? Um, and this is something that we, we had better want, you know, we, we had better be prepared for our hearts to be exposed, right? Because he is kind of showing us who we really are, right? Or maybe that this part or that part of our heart wasn't healed or, you know, um, maybe we're walking in the flesh more than we realize, right? But, but we have to remember above all things that there is a world full of people who need Jesus. There's a world full of people who need his ray of light and his hope and his love and his you know, when we're walking in the truth, we don't have to shove it down people's throats. We don't have to, you know, quote this big, long 10 page statement of what we know, what the Bible says and what is our revelation. And, you know, it just the grace of God will flow freely. Okay, the grace of God, the spirit of God will give us the words to say in those moments. And wisdom, it, it may not be a big, long statement. It may be, you know what, brethren, let me pray with you. It may be, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm here for you. Is there anything that I can do? You know, and, and ultimately, you know, sometimes I think that, even the leaders, we all, we all get misunderstood, you know, and it kind of goes back to God knows us best, right? God knows us best. But I believe this is a time we can use it wisely. We can use this time wisely. We can just fellowship with the Lord. We can be one with him. And I mean, yeah, my heart desires to be transformed you know, to be, to, to minister and to be one with other people, right? To, to give someone hope and look them in their eyes. But I think ultimately we got to get our refill first, you know, and I think that sadly, a lot of churches, a lot of leaders, a lot of pastors, they, they only got into their word or the moment of fellowship to give a statement on the pulpit. And this is, not what God wants. God, God wants us to flow from a place of glory. Okay. From a place of, we've been fellowshipping with him all day, every day. <laughs> and, um, that's where souls get saved because I think that's, you know, that's the thing he's testing us. What is our motivation? What is our motivation? Is our motivation him? <laughs> Is our motivation him? Is our motivation souls? Is our motivation his kingdom? Or without knowing it maybe, have we allowed pride to get into our hearts? You know, I think this is, um, it's easy to do. We're flesh, right? You know, we're human. It's easy, you know, to fall victim to these different these different things that can happen, but pride, it, it hides itself in many ways and it's ugly. It's, it's very ugly. It's here I am. I know more. My God is better than your God. And you know, we're all one. You know, we, we all have a job. You know, we all are loved by God, you know, and you know, we need to know 
how to be fishers of men, not just to present our gifts, right? We need the true anointing, not just the head knowledge. We need to have it deep in our heart, what the Lord has said to us, you know, about who he is and what he wants from us. And, um, you know, we can use this time to, we can use this time wisely or not, you know, um, the word of God says to obey the laws of the land and, uh, you know, whether we agree or not, you know, there are orders in place by our government that, that tells us to move a certain way, um, inside and outside of the church. And, uh, you know, God is in control. If we could only see that he has a purpose in separating us from everything. He has a purpose in sitting us down with him, you know, and um, the purpose is to help the lost find him, you know, to renew, to refresh, to reset, you know, he wants us to see ourselves as he sees us, you know, but he's got to clean out all the junk first, you know, and I think sometimes we get in our, in our own way, we get in his way of what he wants to do inside of our hearts, and um, we can't help anyone find him when maybe our, our heart is still dealing with some bitterness or some, some ugliness of any type of um anything anyway you know and so the lord's really been you know kind of speaking to me about my identity and uh, i see a lot of people who are just so hurt and just so you know they don't know what to do with themselves they've never really had to sit down and deal with themselves you know and i also see a rebellious people um even inside the church that nope i'm not gonna I'm going to do what, what I, oh, and God tells me, well, God's not going to tell you to disobey the law, <laughs> point blank, period. <laughs> he's, he's just not. Um, God is not going to tell you to disobey the law, <laughs> okay? Um, and uh, it's just, it's a time where we really should be alone with him, that we should be one with his spirit that we should be praying like like never before that we should ask him you know lord deal with my heart deal with me you know what does the bible say search my heart you know create in me a clean heart renew my spirit you know and uh this is what he wants to do for everyone in the world and um are we listening you know, are we taking heed to his call? You know, he's he's calling out in the secret place. He says, come away with me. Come away with me. Come away with me. I have, I have this healing balm that I want to give to your heart. And uh, it goes for everyone, everyone, you know, whether we're saved or we're not. And um, yes, hallelujah, when we come out of this, you know, I can see us running into the fields, you know, I can see us running into the fields, you know, and uh, he's raising us up in the spirit, right? So in the spirit, I've literally, during this time of, you know, isolation or, you know, um, quarantine, I have literally felt him rising my spirit up. Um. <laughs> I know someone else can understand what I'm saying. Maybe it sounds crazy, but I have literally felt my spirit rising higher and higher. And, uh, you know, this is what he wants to do. And I also believe, you know, he's also setting some people down. You know, he's, he's, he's setting some people down. You know, he's, he's, he's saying, no, you're, you're not right right now you're you're not right you need to get right with me and he's given us time to get right he's so merciful and he's so graceful and he's you know and that's the thing jesus thank you jesus 
You know, when I was lost, when I was living in darkness, when I was controlled by the Jezebel spirit, controlled by legions of demons, controlled by anything but God, right? How did God win my heart? He didn't win it by bashing me and beating me up and pointing his finger in my face. He didn't. He didn't. He won me by loving on me, even though I wasn't right. He won me by, by showing me grace, by showing me mercy, by giving me love when I didn't deserve it. Because you know what? None of us deserve his love. If God gave each one of us what we deserve right now, we'd all be dead in hell. We don't deserve any of this, you know, and I think that we got to stop being self-righteous. We have got to realize that everything we have and who we are is nothing but God and his grace and his mercy. And if he gave us what we deserve, all of us would be deserving the same thing. And it wouldn't be good, saints. You see, that's why Jesus came and he died. Because he saved us from a life of sin. He saved us from hell. He paved a way to heaven. Jesus. Jesus. And see, I see so many. We've lost our focus. We're focusing on government. We're focusing on things that don't matter. And I'll admit, I had to repent. I did it myself. I've done it myself. See, that's the thing. I'm humble enough to say, I can repent every day. <laughs> every day. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping me humble. Lord, keep me humble. But he will exalt the humble and he will humble those who are prideful. And I believe this is an hour where he is doing it, Jesus. I feel his spirit so strong on that. You know, he will humble those who exalt themselves. You know, he will not share his glory with anyone else. And ultimately, I think it happens so easily that we we don't realize, we don't see how easy it can be to operate in the flesh and pridefulness and in, in a puffed up knowledge and, and to debate and to, you know, none of this is saving anyone, you know. There's a lost world that is searching for Jesus and they just want to see who he is. And you know what? The best example that we can give is a life lived for him. The best example we can give is joyfulness. <laughs> and I say that and I laugh because it's so true. It's so simple. But is it? Is it so simple? Because there aren't very many people witnessing that, you know, um, See, Jesus has given me a joy and a peace, and I know I'm not the only one in this. He's given me, um, yes, a gracefulness, a way to call them in, a way to draw them in, a way to show them who he really is, you know, and um, he didn't do it by beating me up. <laughs> he didn't get me to where I am by beating me up and and shoving his words down my throat. He was so graceful. He knocked on my heart. And when I turned away, he knocked again. And he knocked again. And when I let him in, he kept on cleansing. And he kept on washing. And he's still doing the work. Because he'll never be done with us, right? And I think sometimes we, we tend to... We've all had that... Oh, I've reached that plateau. No... <laughs> You're not in heaven. You haven't reached it. None of us have gotten there yet, okay? Um, he's always working on us. He's always got something to show us, right? He's always pruning, right? He's always, um, never stop pruning me, Jesus. He's always doing something inside of us, you know? He's always given us more revelation and more knowledge. And there's never a spot where we can say we know it all. And um, God is so wise. He's so beyond what we can comprehend. And uh, I know that people need him. They need Jesus. You know, they might not understand the head knowledge. They might not understand um 
a whole bunch of Bible verses, but what they might understand is peace and joy and love and hope. They might understand that when they see a life set apart, when they see a life different, when they see a life that isn't living as the world does, but has a joy beyond what the world does, you know, and, uh, He's examining our hearts and he wants to show us, you know, our flaws and our, our greatness, right? You know, he has um, molded many people's hearts, you know, and he's also calling out to a generation, to a whole world of people that, that just, they need him, you know, and uh, I don't want to be too long on here. I just... I can feel this, this tugging, this pulling, this almost like a, a sorrow that God has that he's just, he says, oh, my people, if you could just see how I see, if you could just look at people, how I see them, if you could just see that I sent my son to die for that person that you're talking about, if you could just see that I sent my son to suffer and die for these people that you don't count worthy, you know, and um, we're all worthy, right? We're all worthy of his love. Do we deserve it? No, no, but he died for all of us. He counted us all worthy enough to die for each one of us. And we just, you know, let's be honest, the church hasn't got it right. The church hasn't got it right. If we did, the world wouldn't look the way it does. You know, if we if we were living the gospel out every moment of our lives, we would be seeing souls be drawn to him and be saved. And we have to remember that we can't do it ourselves. <laughs> we are not the spirit of God. Only God's spirit can do these things. Only God's spirit can work on somebody. You know, and oftentimes we, we've all done it. I've done it. We've all tried to do God's job, right? But what happens? Generally, we get beat up real good. <laughs> we get pounded on and God lets it happen so that we can see, so that we can be even more humble, you know? And in this hour, he is, he sure is humbling and he sure is rising up in the spirit, a warrior, you know, and uh, ultimately he wants to know what is your motivation? What is my motivation? What is our motivation? What motivates us? Is it God? Is it souls? Is it his kingdom? Is it something here on earth, you know? Is it a marriage even? Is it money? Is it status? Is it things? Or is it truly his kingdom? Because, um, you know, he knows. <laughs> you know, the Bible says the heart is above all things deceitful and who will know it? But the Lord, he tests it and he gives according to each man's work. And this is an hour where He's, he's showing us our own selves, but it's only if we're allowing this time and we're being still, you know, he's, you know, some of us, we may actually kind of, you know, be hearing good things from God, right? Um, some people are so heartbroken because they're so far from God living in sin. You know, the world has so many devices, so many ways to separate us from his presence or from what he wants you know um and they make it seem normal they make it seem the world makes it just seem as though vacation is normal um you know sports are normal tv is normal and hobbies are normal and all these things and boy we're weird if we aren't doing all these things but it's all okay to a point. I'm not downgrading all of that. But what I'm saying is 
First comes the will of God. Everything else is just meaningless. It's just meaningless. It is. We can see the signs of his return. We can see it. We can see that there is an agenda, that there is a global order, a one world order that, that ultimately the spirit of the Antichrist wants to put in place, right? We also know that Jesus will come and get us and he will save us from the wrath of God. He will save us from these things if we would call out to him, if we would give him our lives. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know that anyone alive, no matter what your age is, um, has seen anything like this happen in our, in our world, in our nation. And uh, now is the time to kind of re rejuvenate and, um, you know, work on those things inside of ourselves, work on, you know, our prayer life, work on individual you know our relationship with him because no it's not the end <laughs> not yet it's uh it's fairly close and we we know it but he's trying to get the attention of as many as he can and uh it's only his grace his joy his love in truth all these things together in unity one can't overpower another. It has to be his spirit working through us. It has to be his, his spirit, his spirit, his spirit. It's, it's, it, it's so easy to operate in the flesh and not know it. It's so easy to be prideful and to, to use our head knowledge and not know it. I know because I've done it. It's, it's nature. It's human. And, um, you know, he is showing us who we really are, right? But I think that sadly, some aren't even listening. You know, and I speak for the people inside of the church. You know, I think that a lot of people need the Jesus in us. But do we even let Jesus manifest himself? You know, Jesus said that those who obey his commandments, that him and his father would come and make a place in our heart. But do we allow it or do we stop it with our own flesh and silly, prideful debates and, you know, calling people names and you know, this is not a time to debate scripture. This is not a time to call people names. And um, Lord Jesus, I ask that you expose the hearts of people to themselves. Lord Jesus, that you show the brethren and the world who you are, Lord. That you would call them deeper into who you are, Jesus, that you would call them deeper into your grace, your hope, your love, your mercy, your peace, that you would show them what you want, Lord Jesus, that you would show them how much you love every single person in the world. And ultimately, that you would show the lost, Lord, how much they're loved, that you would give hope where they feel hopeless, that you would give peace, where they feel anxiety, Lord, that you would show them that they are looking for you and that there's no other thing in the world that will give them what you will. In your name, Jesus, amen. I see that's what it is, so nothing will fill the void but Jesus and uh it's got to be all about him. And on the side where there's so many that don't know him, he's calling your heart. He's knocking on the door of your heart. And uh, he's even made it to where maybe you can't do other things that you used to do. 
Maybe you can't call on other people and uh, be encouraged. He's with you. Be encouraged. He loves you. Be encouraged. He has a purpose for everything. Be encouraged. He is in full control of this. He just wants you home with him. He wants you to see this life is passing us all by, that it is but a vapor, that all these things we do, they're pointless, they're meaningless, if it isn't pointing to heaven. And I say that <laughs> as a woman who used to live in drunkenness, as a woman who used to live popping a pill, having sex, smoking weed, buying things, looking for fulfillment in all the wrong places. And the Lord, he set me down. He used situations and circumstances in my life to sit me down, to break my heart so that he could mold me. And I'm so thankful for all of it, every single thing. I would not change anything. So hear me out that if if this is where you are, if, if you're broken and, you, and your heart is hurting, call out to Jesus. No better place to be than on your knees. Call out to him, you know. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you just as you are. But he loves you so much that he wants to transform your heart so that it's not in pain anymore. So that it's not boastful anymore. So that you don't have to stick up for yourself anymore because you know who you are. Because you will know your creator. And I think ultimately that's it, you know. When we know him and we know ourselves, we don't have to stick up for ourselves. We know he will. Let God fight for you. Be still. You know, build your relationship with him. If you never have, I, I ask you, now's the time to be baptized. If you can't... Um, necessarily like go to a church any tub of water works all you have to do is pray over it and anoint it you see god gives us the power to do these things and uh we just have to believe you know this is a time where maybe all we got is god but guess what we realize it's all we need right because it truly is and this world doesn't want you to know it. Satan doesn't want you to know that all you really need is God. That all you really need is Jesus. And that might sound crazy to someone, but you know what? It's the truth. And I stand tall in Jesus. But there was a time when I was a mess. My own hands through Satan had destroyed my life and the... Uh, Praise you, Lord Jesus, for being a new creation, right? That's what he wants to do right now. You know, he wants to make people new creations. He wants to make you whole in him. And so I just, I, I urge you to just, you know, go in a room by yourself and just say his name over and over again. You know, if you feel sad or whatever it is pray you know get in your bible read the gospel read matthew read mark and luke and john you know um, don't necessarily start at the first testament and i know some people might say i'm wrong for that but um read about jesus read about your savior read about the one that died for you to find your father and uh, I don't want to make this too long. I just, I just want to give someone hope. And uh, the hope is Jesus. I love you all. I'm 
I'm kind of excited, you know, to see what God's going to do through all this, you know. Amazingly, He's given me a peace that I, I can't even explain. I, I, I can't even explain it. It's so beyond words. The, the hope in my heart, the joy in my heart, it's, it's actually kind of something that's just springing forth in all of this. And uh, I don't really understand, but he, he knows what he's doing. I, uh, he'll give it to anyone. He doesn't love me any more than he loves you. <laughs> we just uh, seek him out, you know. I'm praying for everyone, and I'm hoping that uh, that God's loving on you, you know, that he's just holding you in his arms, that he's just cradling you. Maybe you need to be cradled like a baby right now. That's okay. He's there. He loves you no matter where you are, and uh, be encouraged. Be encouraged that uh, he'll never leave you or forsake you. And uh, he's knocking on your heart. He's knocking on your heart. He's knocking on your heart. You know, and um, you'll never regret answering to Jesus. You'll never regret it. Be blessed. I hope this encouraged someone. I just, um, if you need prayer, if you need anything, you can message me and uh, be blessed in Jesus' name. <laughs>